much has been said, but I too want to thank the speaker, the governor, the business community most of all, as well as the labor community uh, for coming forward today on this very important issue. As I've said many times, the challenge that of our deteriorating transportation infrastructure is one that we can no longer ignore. What we needed to, in this state, which has been ignored for many years, is the leadership to come forward with a bold plan to address this. The governor has done that, and it hasn't been easy. And I want to say thank you for hanging in there in the recent months and dispelling the misinformation that's there. It's We've listened to the public, and after listening to the public, we've made changes in the plan from its original proposal. We've also determined, as the speakers often said, um, that the governor's proposal remains the best proposal, with some changes that we've all agreed to after 10 months of working the numbers through. What are some of the things that we've done in this bill? Well, thanks to the federal funding that was approved in December, the borrowing was cut in half and interest costs were reduced by 65%. Many of the folks that came out in opposition to this legislation did so before the new and revised bill uh, came out. How do I know that? Because I've been answering calls over the past couple of days. Um, the other thing is the average toll was reduced to $3 in response to concerns that were raised. And the number of gantries were also reduced. And perhaps most importantly, based upon a lot of the phone calls and public input, the new legislation prohibits the tolling of passenger vehicles without requiring the voter, voter's approval. This roadworks proposal is critical. And it is critical if we are going to move the Rhode Island economy forward. <coughs> I want to thank everyone who's here today to show your support, because I know that it hasn't been easy. Competing proposals have been raised. And as both the speaker and the governor said, we've asked our fiscal staffs over the last 10 months to run those numbers, such as proposals to increase the diesel tax or to divert funds from other priorities. Why do I feel confident as I sit here today? The speaker and I sometimes show our yin and yang personalities. He <laughs> focused as talking to you about the tax cuts that we've done and some of the incentives that we've done to save uh, to, to move Rhode Island forward. But what I want to say, because one of these proposals is just cut more money from the budget, is he has stood side by side with me and the governor over in her capacity as treasurer to take some of the most difficult votes the General Assembly could take to cut the budget. One of them was last year, and Peter, you were very much part of this, and that was cutting $70 million from Medicaid. That was a hard vote. That required a lot of restructuring of Medicaid and changes in the budget. And we made that cut last year and it carries over to this year and this year's budget again has more cuts to Medicaid. In addition, many of you in this room were not standing here cheering when we had to make those difficult votes to ensure the passage of pension reform. And that was a vote that quite honestly kept me up many nights because it really did hurt people but we needed to do it. We needed to slim down the budget to move the economy forward, to ensure the future safety net for all generations. And we made that vote. So I must admit, I get a little aggravated when I hear people say, just cut. We are cutting, we will continue to cut. And even if I didn't want to cut, I got the speaker here making sure that I cut. <laughs> and um, we will make sure it's a lean budget. But we cannot borrow this money with, it would be irresponsible to borrow money through the funding of the Garvey without a revenue source. The revenue source that's been proposed and the only one that seems to work with the numbers and every, all the fiscal people have run it has been the toll. So I thank you for investing in Rhode Island's future, for believing in us for Rhode Island's future. Because we know this isn't a vote or a bill that's gonna show dividends next month and next year. And it makes me laugh when people say, oh, this is political. This is, in many ways, bad politics, because it's not the kind of thing that you see next month or by November when the elections happen, but it's one that future generations will see. Your children, your grandchildren will see. 
because we will no longer be at the bottom of the barrel with the worst roads and bridges around the country. And it's an equitable <coughs> proposal that we believe needs to move forward. So with that, I want you to know that we are listening, that we thank you. And I will mention one thing too, the Coalition for Transportation Choices has also written a letter in support, which contains many environmental groups who also believe in user fees as the right way to move forward in funding our bridges. So the coalition that has been spoken to about today by so many, Business Labor, also has many other groups that support this. And to that end, I want to thank all of those, even those who may not be participating in today's press conference, for their support. The cities and town mayors, you didn't have to come today. Thank you for your leadership. And once again, um, we will move forward and we will continue to listen and we will look forward to working together with you, not only on this issue, but on other issues as well. Thanks. <laughs>